Have you ever found yourself scrambling to the floor to pick up a piece of food before five seconds is up? And even once the food is back in your hand, you try to assess like, should I eat this or is it not worth the risk? For me, this also really depends. Did I drop like a carrot or a piece of chocolate? Because if it's chocolate, you can bet that I'm dusting that bad boy off and enjoying my sweet treat. This is the infamous five second rule where if you pick food up fast enough within five seconds of falling on the ground, you are safe to eat that food. And I'm guessing most of us probably learned this quite young. At least I don't even remember learning the five second rule. I just always feel like I have known it. Now that I'm an adult and a scientist, I got to thinking about this culinary urban legend and wondering, what does science have to say about this? As I got sucked into this rabbit hole about the five second rule, I realized the answer isn't clear cut. It's not that simple because food drop on the floor doesn't just depend on how long it stays there. There's actually a whole lot of other factors we need to consider. The first area I wanted to investigate was time. Like what is so special about five seconds and would five seconds be very different than if I dropped a food on the floor for four seconds versus six seconds? And in some ways it is different and I want to show you the first study I found because believe it or not there's a handful of published peer-reviewed scientific studies on the five second rule. In this study, they dropped four different foods on the floor. This included gummy bears, watermelon, bread, and bread with butter. And they let this food lay on the floor for one second, five seconds, 30, and 300 seconds. And what the researchers found that was in general, the longer the food stays on the floor, the more contaminated it gets, the more microorganisms that are transferred from the floor onto the food. And a second study I found confirmed the same phenomena. So this study looked at bologna and bread again, and what they saw was as these two foods sat on the floor, again, the longer the time, the more bacterial transfer. To me, this seemed very logical, right? Like the longer the food is interacting with the floor that they're in contact, the more bacteria that are gonna attach to the food and hitch a ride. So in one sense, I feel like this does validate the five second rule because five seconds is a whole lot better than 300 seconds. But, and there's a big but here, B-U-T, not B-U-T-T, that doesn't mean the food is safe to eat. Yes, it's less contaminated, has less microbes transferred, but even a small amount of the right microorganism can still make you sick. And one research group saw that the food dropped on the floor was contaminated instantaneously. It doesn't matter how fast you lunge to pick up that food, there's still some microbial transfer from the floor to the food. It doesn't matter. This means even if your food spends a very small amount of time on the floor, if a pathogenic bacteria transfers, which it can do instantaneously, and it's in a high enough number to infect you, no time on the floor is good. Any time on the floor could make you sick. So from this viewpoint, the five second rule is not true. It's not valid because an instant on the floor is enough to make the food unsafe. But as I was reading these articles, it turns out time isn't even the most important factor we should consider. There's a lot more happening we need to dig into. Exactly what type of food did you drop on the floor? Was it wet or dry? Was it fatty or lean? Because what I learned was the food composition is incredibly important and I did not give this enough thought before doing the research on the five second rule. Two studies have confirmed that wet foods, so they tested watermelon and cucumbers that had been washed, these wet foods pick up way more germs than dry foods. These high levels of moisture in the food and on the food surface make it easier for the microorganisms to attach and transfer from the floor to the food. There is possibly one other confounding factor about the cucumbers and watermelon. They are both wet, but it also doesn't help they have a very uh, 
flat uniform surface it would have a lot of contact area with the floor and some of the other foods tested like uh, gummy bears or lettuce leaves they might benefit that their their surface is so um, bumpy or you know it's not uniform so there's less contact area so there is one caveat but it does seem like wet food fares a lot worse there's one other characteristic that seems to have a trend and that's fatty food so feel free to drop your fatty foods on the floor. These are not picking up as many microorganisms. This observation was made when researchers dropped cucumbers versus chicken breast, which has uh, quite a bit of fat in it. And this strength of fatty foods to not get contaminated, this comes down to that fatty or hydrophobic surface or hydrophobic molecules in the fat, which doesn't seem to attract the microorganisms as much as especially that watery or wet surface. So what I'm saying is there's a big difference between dropping a really juicy piece of cantaloupe versus a fried fatty potato chip. But this is not the end of the story. Because if the type of food you drop matters, then you can start to think that the type of floor you drop that food on is also very important. And studies have shown that not all floors are created equally. Pretty consistently, carpet has been shown to be the best floor to drop your food on, which honestly blew my mind. I would have thought carpet was the worst with like all those fibers poking up. It's a lot of surface area. Bacteria can go on the fiber down below. But studies have shown that carpet, when bologna was dropped on carpet, there was less than 0.5% bacterial transfer. Very little transfer. Tile, on the other hand, seems to be the absolute worst floor to drop food on. When the same bologna was dropped on a tile flooring for five seconds, there was 99% microbial transfer right? That's crazy. Now, if you have wood floors, these seem to land somewhere in between carpet and tile. The results were much more variable for wood flooring. But I couldn't stop thinking about carpet. Like, that is the grossest type of flooring, I feel like, for spills and stains. Like, it just gets sucked in. So what is so magical about carpet? And I found another study that also cited carpet as the best flooring to drop food onto. What the researchers suggest is that sort of the depressed areas where you go down lower than the fibers sticking up in the carpet, the bacteria can occupy these lower areas or these depressed areas. So when a food is dropped on carpet, it doesn't even come in contact with all the bacterial contamination. It just sits on the top of the carpet fibers. Basically, the bacteria might infiltrate and attach lower into the carpet instead of attaching to your food when it's dropped. So if you have carpet like me, things are looking good. But I haven't even mentioned what one study calls the biggest factor when it comes to that five second rule. Are you a slob or a neat freak? And I'm only asking because if you have dirty floors, it does not matter how quickly you snatch up that food. Experiments have shown that the higher bacteria count on the floor, no matter what food is dropped, the higher amount of bacteria transferred onto that food. In fact, just how clean or dirty your floors are might just be the most important factor whether or not the five second rule should hold in your household or not. So if you need some motivation to keep your house cleaner, and I'm talking to myself here trying to pump myself up, the cleaner your floors are, the more likely it's totally fine when you drop your food, but grab it quickly, that you're A-OK -okay to eat that food. If you enjoyed this video, next I would watch my video on how food regulation can stop these microorganisms from causing a public health crisis.